Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is Mark Ellis. Welcome one and all to the best movie news show in the entire galaxy. My name is Mark, and the revolution will not be televised, but we might live stream it. On today's show, <laughs> Hasbro has a new division. We have a Black Panther trailer, and Gomez and Fester might mamushka one more time. Who's joining me, Ashley? Also, here is John Schnapp. What's going on? It's Monday. What? Where's my camera? Hey, how you Nailed doing? It. It's good to be here. Oh, no, the oh, camera yeah. gag. Hell yeah. Also, here, Perry Nemiroff. Yeah, I'm not playing that one. I'm just happy to be here because I almost died. Died thanks to some bees this morning, but I'm here and I'm safe, and there's no bees in this there building. There is a real oh. bee situation at Perry's apartment. This Whoa. could have been like really? a Macaulay Culkin no, yeah, My Girl kidding. incident. Oh my God! Were you screaming? Don't you say bees? that. Now you went there. to go yeah. home. That's dark. Yeah. That is dark. <laughs> I'll go right. I'll, I'll go right to My Girl. <laughs> Mark Riley, are you afraid of bees? Uh, uh, no, I'm fine with bees. Uh, Perry, again. Bees cannot make keys to the apartment. You're fine. <laughs> they're not going to. They're not going to be. They're on the today. outside. I'm I was sorry. saying. She told us. It's like she comes out of her apartment. And it's like, hey, Barry, how you doing? You want a cigarette? What's going on over there? We're taking you hanging out a little there? bit later. Going inside your apartment while you're not here. Yeah, I'm a bee. I'm yeah. a bee. I didn't know bees talked like that. I went right to my girl. I could have gone to Blade Runner 2049, which I finally saw last night. There's a really weird scene involving bees in that movie. And then you also have the classic Nicolas Cage and the Wicker Man. The bees. Not, not the bees. The bees. Yeah. Not the bees. Be All right. What's our first story today? Actually, I know what our first story is because yeah. it's not even on the sidebar we have right here. <laughs> There's a new Black Panther trailer that dropped. So we're going to talk about it right now. I'm going right to the sweatiest amongst us, Mr. John Schnepp. We got a nice poster. We got a great new trailer. How you feeling? Loving it. Totally unexpected. Woke up this morning with a Black Panther trailer. That's kind of a cool way to wake up. Yeah. Like, ah, checking the Internet. What? So watched it about six <laughs> times. I uh, thought it was great. Uh, I love all the, you know, the, a lot of the scenes that they showed it's in San Diego Comic Con. They had like the regular trailer, and then they showed like a a four or five minute extended clip. You'll see clips of that now in this trailer, and even more. So I love the way they're introducing the story. They're opening it up a little bit more. You're finding out a little bit more about what we're gonna expect to see both uh, T'Challa doing, as well as like all the other villains. Uh, now we kind of know that there's going to be a Black Panther versus Black Panther sequence, probably at the end of the movie. But, you know, we all kind of guess that when they show trailers, they're giving you a little bit of the entire film. So I think it was just enough now that, uh, you know, it comes out in March. I guess whatever the third trailer will be adding to what we've just seen. Uh, February is the release date for Black Panther, Ooh, so February. mark it on your calendars, kiddies. And I think that with this trailer, we got a lot of new footage, like you said, but I, I don't think we gave away too much of the story here. No. I think that we still have a lot of mystery going into Black Panther, and certainly with Wakanda and how it plays into the rest of Earth, this trailer did give us this nice, tasty little nugget in that Wakanda is almost like Themyscira, where it's just, it's not so easy to get. It's not just like, why haven't we visited? We should go on vacation to Wakanda. No, it's a it's a tougher thing to penetrate than just a place to visit. And I like that aspect of it. I think the color palette in this trailer exploded on the screen. It's great. Again, music, like we saw Run the Jewels in the last trailer. Here we have The Revolution Will Not Be Televised, matched in with some other stuff. I thought it played out so tremendously well. The action in this is top notch. I love every Everything about watching this trailer. Perry, are you as excited as I am? I am so excited. This was exactly what I wanted from another trailer, and I think you're totally right. It doesn't give us all that much story. We do get to see a lot more. We get to see a lot more of Wakanda and all the technology they're using, and it seems like this is so heavily focused on Michael B. Jordan's character and just mm -hmm. kind of setting up the battle between Black Panther and Killmonger more so than anything, but without saying, oh, this happens, mm. and then they fight, and then they're fighting for this, and this happens if he loses. It was just all done through visuals and flavor and style, and it's just so exciting to me, especially hot on the heels of that New Mutants trailer, to see these franchises that have existed for so many years, yet to get something that feels so different. So yeah. I cannot wait to see this movie. Riley, how are you feeling after watching the trailer? You know, there's something exciting going on over at Marvel right now. <laughs> This is great because I saw Thor and was like, wait a minute, that was so different. It's so fun and had a very distinct voice from Taika Waititi. And now we get this Black Panther trailer. I, I was speechless watching this thing, man. I was like, wait a minute, this is exciting. 
That music, the music is phenomenal in this thing. And so, like everybody said here, this, the color palette is just off the charts. We got this great music. We didn't get a lot in the way of plot, but yeah, we could kind of figure it out, Schnapp, like you said, but it's exciting. I love what we have going with Marvel. It looks like Marvel is just like kind of giving the keys mm. over to uh, their directors, and they're like, just have fun. And they're doing these distinct voices inside the Marvel Universe, which makes it different, which makes it very unique and original, and I, I couldn't be more excited You, you know this. what I like most about this trailer? They really kind of give you the uh, the design sensibilities of Wakanda. Yeah. You get to really, like, the first teaser trailer is what, you know, I guess that one was, like, a minute and a half or whatever. You saw, like, a lot of, uh, a, lo a little few glimpses of Wakanda, and now we've seen so much more of Wakanda and, and all of the royal guards and everybody just has it just feels like it's a it's a, it feels like it belongs in Marvel but it's also like a separate like a totally separate new universe. You know? If you're keeping score at home, it took Mark Riley six minutes to remind us that he's seen Thor Ragnarok, and I have. That's <laughs> all going to change tomorrow Tom night, though. I'm seeing it too. Yeah, too buddy. We're yeah, I've seen it again. I'm yeah, yeah. It again. shut yeah. up. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> I want to throw it over to the news desk as well, Ashley and Wendy. I know you all got a chance to check out the Black Panther trailer, and Wendy, I want to start with you because you were <laughs> literally so you were you were making loud noises right before <laughs> we went to air, and I think you enjoyed the trailer from what I. Heard? This is so embarrassing, you guys. That trailer is so juicy. I was like reacting out loud. I didn't mean to. The part that I reacted to when, when I said what, and I guess it sounded it was like bad news because everybody looked over like, what happened yeah. to the world? And I was like, no, it was just the, the Black Panther, Panther versus Black Panther sequence. And I was like, what? Um, and then I had to click stop because we started the show. So I won't have to. It's okay. I don't mind watching Michael B. Jordan all over again. It's fine. Ashley, she's playing it a little more innocent than it actually went down because we, we, we literally did. got the question concerned. from what either Cody mean? or Adam, and they're like, hey, are you guys are you guys ready to street? They literally said, you guys ready to go? And the first thing we heard next was Wendy going, what? And we're like, uh-oh, what happened? <laughs> I was like, we need did to stop? some drama happen? But yeah, this trailer <laughs> was sick. The music, I was jamming the whole time. And I don't know really what kind of world I was expecting, but the world just seems so huge. It was like grandioso, but seeing Angela back it in there too. I mm -hmm. thought when I read the news that she was going to be in this, it might take me out, but like, I think she's an amazing actress and I was just so excited to see her in this. So I'm exciting. Yeah, we're very excited, excited, excited here for the new Black Panther trailer. The movie comes out in February. And in the meantime, some of us are going to get to check out <laughs> Thor Ragnarok, the next film in the MCU, as soon as tomorrow night. Some of us will be seeing it for the second time. <laughs> Not no. me. Duh. All right, let's move on to the Weird, first huh? official story we have in the rundown, and that includes some more MCU stuff. At the recent press conference for Thor Ragnarok, Valkyrie actress Tessa Thompson revealed she wants an all-female superhero team-up movie, and she's already working with other women from the MCU to make it happen. Thanks to the playlist, the outlet found an interview in which Thompson said she recently marched up with a couple of other women who work in Marvel and asked Kevin Feige, how about a movie with some female superheroes, like all of them? Feige replied, it was a pretty amazing moment to be somewhere and have your shoulder be tapped and turn around, find every Every female hero we have is standing there going, how about it? And I said, yes. Mark, do you think it's time for an all-female Avengers type movie? And could Marvel actually put it into production? I absolutely do. I think that they could put it into production eventually. I think that we do have some cleaning up to do in the meantime before we get to this picture, simply because of the upcoming slate that is on Marvel's calendar, because you have Ant-Man and the Wasp coming out. You have the Infinity War movies. You have some, I think there, there's, you're going to have Spider-Man Homecoming Part 2 or whatever they call that that movie but then you also have Captain Marvel coming out and I wonder if they could utilize Captain Marvel not only as a way to get us to the other side of whatever happens in Infinity War because Captain Marvel is going to take place in the 90s but we know that Marvel's a big fan of post credit scenes and so this might have been something that did literally shock Kevin Feige when he heard it and then he is thinking on the spot like oh yeah maybe we should do this I actually think it'd be a great idea I think that if you have an all-female cast that it's like that version of the Avengers that they could serve a actual functional purpose in the MCU going forward. And I think that you might be able to do that after we get through whatever these two Avengers movies coming up are. Perry, how do you see that? Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think it's only a matter of time before something like this happens. They do need to get through that part of the story first. The only concern I would ever have with something like this, because I love all these characters, and based on what I'm hearing, I'm really going to like Tessa Thompson and Thor too. The only thing that I would ask for is, which is going to be a challenge, is that 
it's one thing when the Avengers come together. That felt organic and natural. I just want this team to come together if they do wind up making a female superhero team up movie where it's not, oh, you come together because you're the ladies. We just, we need a reason, you know? And I can't, in my wildest dreams, think of, of a logical story reason for just the ladies to come together and to pluck out all the male superheroes. So as long as they crack that little story nugget there, I definitely want this. I just want a reason for it. Yeah, it would be an odd thing to have something go down and all of these heroes have to team up. But for whatever reason, the men are like, oh, we're going to sit this one out. Y'all go handle it. But if they come up with that story angle snap i think that this would be a cool movie to see happen do you think that it will yeah but i wouldn't look at it like the way like from a comic book reading perspective there's a thing called marvel team up and it was always like the thing and some other dude and that so occasionally a gal would show up a superhero uh but uh why not just do it like that you don't i mean there's it's not like all the men in the universe are going to disappear and it's not like you know Captain America or Iron Man or Thor all of a sudden don't exist. They could still even be in the movie, but there could be a re, you know, hey, like all four of them happen to be hanging out together and some stuff goes down. They're there at the moment. Bam, you have a self and you know, enclosed story. And that's how I would work. And I think, you know, they can all just be having dinner. Yeah. And then something <laughs> bad happens. I mean, it's a, just make it organic. It doesn't have to be like, we're, you know, teaming up because we're all women. I think, you know, just like any of these other uh, movies where it's like, two or three guys are all together and then they hang out and then they become a team. Same thing. I, I think they're already going to be a part of the Avengers already. So I don't know if this would be like phase four or whatever, the, if it's not going to be a phase anymore, like system four, whatever it's going to be called. <laughs> um, I don't think Marvel's going to, you know, di not do any more films in this MCU. I mean, I, they keep announcing this is the end of a 22, you know, movie arc. You know, that's what they keep calling the, the two Avengers films. And we're coming to the end of the, the phase three. And they haven't announced if there's going to be a phase four. And the, so they're being very mysterious about it. But we do know that Spider-Man happens right after that last Avengers. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, so. I mean, I think that when you have these like cataclysmic end of all times kind of movies like Infinity War, what that's going to be, then you want every hero on the docket to show up for that. But then, Riley, you look at movies like Captain America Winter Soldier, and that's primarily a Black Widow cap team up. Yeah. So you could have a story like that that might involve or portend to some larger events happening where it could be a few female superheroes all team up to go on a mission. I think if you have a movie like that, it feels more organic to Perry's point. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that could go into production for Marvel Slate after we get through the Infinity Wars. Yeah, I think you brought up a good point with Captain Marvel. That can maybe, I know it's set in the 90s, but there could be some kind of setup, you know. Um, we know that Captain Marvel, it, it, just from the premise, she could be disappearing for a while and then, you know, obviously has to come back. Um, what does is, what is her travels hold? Where, where does she go? Does she go? Is she meeting up with Valkyrie at one point? You know, there's a lot of angles you can use. And Tessa Thompson knows her stuff because she brings up Lady Liberators mm -hmm. as a, and Kevin Feige's like deep cut, whoa, like this old comic that there is, uh, you know, a team up that included the Wasp and Black Widow and Scarlet Witch and Medusa, and they were led by Valkyrie. So that's an interesting. She goes, "Yep, here's here's the 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 precedent. This is what we could jump off of." But y'all bring up great points. It needs to be a good concept, organic, and not just like you know, throw them together and like, hey, we're ladies and we're taking over. It could be, I like your idea of Winter Soldier where there's something in the mix where, you know, you can include some of the Marvel heroes like either a Cap or an Iron Man or whoever it might be and it could branch off into a story that feels organic and we get that thing. And I think it's going to happen. It's the right time. I think uh, Captain Marvel might be the, the movie to kind of maybe launch it. I don't know. Well, we know that there's going to be a movie studio that's going to be launching some very exciting properties coming up. Ooh, we segue. think. All right, Ashley, tell us about it. <laughs> In a report from Variety, Hasbro is making moves to become the next Marvel by hiring Greg Moradian to oversee the company's film division, now dubbed AllSpark Pictures. As president of AllSpark, Moradian will oversee film and television production starting in January with sources for Variety saying the company is trying to attract funding in the nine-figure range to properly develop its own slate of films in-house, films based on their line of toys and games that include Mr. Potato Head, Monopoly, and My Little
Little Pony. Though Hasbro and Paramount have successfully made films based on Hasbro characters like Transformers and G.I. Joe, it's reported that those franchises will not be a part of the new pact. Schnapp, what do you think about Hasbro becoming their own studio to rival Marvel? Did you say Mr. Potato Head? I sure <laughs> did. I was like, I was just kind of like stunned. And like, what are the other two? Monopoly? And my and, Little Pony. And My Little Pony. Yeah, Have I you seen my glasses? Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm so excited about All Spark. I don't even know what. How is this even news? I guess it's like you know, it's like one hand clapping. I don't know what you know. All Spark, but it's not going to invo involve the Transformers. Yet you're, they're using the All Spark. So I, either, I, either I, it's just misinformation, and they're like, we're getting all this money so we can make an incredible Micronauts mask. Transformers, G.I. Joe, ROM, like super universe, which is what they should be doing. I don't know what this potato head thing is. I don't even know. I don't know how to. But, but Monopoly featuring the little potato heads, right? Like, oh, yeah. you got to cross version. these universes. Yeah, you got to have a story where Mr. Potato Head wakes up. Where did my left ear go? And then the Monopoly guy is riding a My Little Pony, yeah. and then they all come and like go on a mission together and the buy real estate. Big thing with AllSpark is that if this was a buy or sell, I'd have to sell it for no other reason because Hasbro does not have the distribution rights to Transformers, so it's called AllSpark, but they're not going to be making Transformers movies under this umbrella. And that's like, wait a minute. So you call it All Spark to get us excited about it, but then you're not making that. Now, I know Hasbro has a lot of properties that they could crank out, and they might be very profitable, but we didn't really see that with My Little Pony. And I don't think that we're going to see that with a Monopoly movie or Mr. Potato Head. So these are the kind of properties that you're leading with. I understand you wanting to make movies based on the, the toys or whatever because there's a potentiality there, but I just haven't seen it come to fruition yet. So, Riley, I'm going to have to... Uh, temper my enthusiasm right now for All Spark Productions. How you're, about you? You're gonna temper it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, okay. All Spark. <laughs> yeah, I I, we, I wanted to talk about this because it just, you know, if they had Schnepp, you said it. We need a Transformers, GI Joe, big shared universe of movies. Mm -hmm. When you say no Transformers, no GI Joe, but shared universe of movies, Potato Head, Monopoly, My Little oh, Pony, yeah. I'm. I'm Pulling it up now. Clue. Uh, okay, the Furbies are there. Furbies, okay. Oh, now I'm in. You mentioned Furbies. I'm 100% um, in. You know, Monopoly, Mr. Potato Head. Here we go. My Little Pony. What else is there? Operation. You know, throw that in the oh, mix. Oh, I see a movie in that. Play-Doh. Oh. You know, we can, uh, you, know, you know, these heroes that are like, oh. you know, put themselves together and become big. And, and then they, they get Mr. Potato Head, who's putting on his, like, you know, yeah. his helmet head or his... His ears super hearing. One of his ears is ears. made of play doh. It's yeah. like a spy. It's uh, <laughs> what? Uh, okay, I under I understand the idea of of okay wanting to do the Marvel way, and that's Marvel gets five hundred million dollars from Merrill Lynch, and they make Iron Man, right. and they start it off, and they and they do a good story, and they put that nugget at the end that goes, wait a minute, Avengers, and they they organically built their universe. This is again. I don't know if it's reverse that, but it kind of feels like that. Like everybody's doing their shared universe. We're gonna try to to do the same, or they just want to be doing their own projects and make, you know, Mr. Potato Head movie their way. <laughs> they well, cut like, Mr. They, Potato Head way. in half, Which and there's an entire universe. Inside I don't doubt of that they could do a movie like they want to develop it in house and and pull in there. Like we know how to tell the proper Mr. Potato Head movie. <laughs> All, all for it, Hasbro. Do it. Mm. If you have an idea for a Mr. Potato Head movie and you don't want Paramount coming in and uh, going like, no, well, we got to add, you know, Channing Tatum to this. All Spark Industries. Yeah, uh, I, it's, it's just, not really Mr. Potato Head canon, Joe. It's, it, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's <laughs> Potato it Head sounds, lore, Mark. It just sounds so ridiculous right now. To be right fair now. here, look, none of these movies are really going to be aimed at our demographic. Okay? Exactly, I'm exactly. A, I'm an old man and I'll be dead next week, so I'm not really the guy that you're aiming any of these movies at. Perry, I think the issue that I would have here if I was a shareholder is you look at some recent kids movies that have come out that have tried to be based on something, whether it's the Emoji movie or My mm -hmm. Little Pony, and they just have not hit at the box office the way that you might expect them to, so why would this be the right time for this company to come about? I figured it out. So oh the shared universe is actually Play-Doh. And even though they can't make Transformers movies and they can't make G.I. Joe movies, you make those characters out of Play-Doh. Oh, and then when it doesn't work, you just smash it all up and start all over again. See? 
That's uh, cracked that's it. The right? pitch in the board. Right? Cracked it. Yeah. That's uh, a go the, picture. This is one of the dumbest <laughs> ideas I've ever heard. I just saw that My Little Pony movie, and it's not like you said with these things. It's not for me. But I also hear that fans of My Little Pony, it did not meet their standards. On top of that, it didn't make a lot of money. We'll talk about it in box office, but I'll spoil it right now. It dropped a lot going into Weekend 2. These Transformers movies, even though it's not included in this deal, they're getting a bad reputation. People are starting to lose interest in it. G.I. Joe never really took off. They had those two movies, but those movies haven't continued. I don't really understand why anyone thinks this would be a good idea and worth any sort of investment like this. And I just wish that companies would would stop saying Marvel in their press releases. Yeah. Somebody that is part of this deal reached out to a trade and said, you can have this exclusive. Make sure to put in the bit where we're trying to be like Marvel. <laughs> Why would you want to put that negative connotation on starting up your, your studio arm like that? Because Perry, I mean, no sense. when you hear Mr. Potato Head and Monopoly, you instantly <laughs> think amazing, thriving superhero you know, films. Speaking right? of that Monopoly movie, yeah. that how many years has, has that Scott. been in development and never gotten off the ground? Yeah, Come on. I'm waiting for Ridley Scott to direct that incredible Monopoly movie. <sighs> no one asked for this. I played Monopoly, kids. I know you don't even know what it is. It's a board game. I know you don't even know what that is. But check it out. Board games used to be really popular. Back in the 60s and even 70s and partial 80s. I was the best banker in all of the town. That's right. I you went to jail and cheated. got out free. You probably were a cheating banker, but I have to say, guys, to be <laughs> fair. <laughs> wait, wait. You just <laughs> throw that barb at me. I was, a, I was a very a honest banker. But I have to say, to be fair, Mr. Potato Head worked in Toy Story, so what if they kind of go the Toy Story Well, route? that's the problem. Toy Story did it already. It's like, yeah. I think when you were describing it, I'm like, that sounds a lot like Toy Story. <laughs> yeah. Where's my glasses? Twister yeah. the movie. Look, They I have can, Twister. All I'll, right. I'll, I'll tell you guys this. <laughs> Ashley Mova is never getting a hotel on Park Avenue. She's going no. right to jail. Do not oh, pass go. No. Do not collect $200. What movies collected $200 this weekend? <laughs> it's Monday and time for hey. the weekend box office report. With an estimated $26.5 million, Blumhouse's Happy Death Day took the number one spot in its first weekend in release, followed by Blade Runner 2049 in the number two spot with $15.1 million. 2049 dropped 54% in its second weekend, with its domestic total now at $60 million. The Foreigner took the number three spot in its first weekend, pulling in an estimated $12.8 million. It landed in the number four spot with an estimated $6 million, pushing its domestic total to $315 million. And rounding out the top five was The Mountain Between Us, dropping 46.5% for an estimated $5.65 million, with a domestic total now at $20.5 million. <coughs> Perry, thoughts on the weekend box office? So Blumhouse is having a really good year. Mm -hmm. A really good year. Uh, they had Get Out, Split, and now Happy Death Day is a certified hit. That blew away expectations because when I was making my predictions, I did think that there was a very good chance that it was going to come down to Happy Death Day and Blade Runner. And I'm disappointed Blade Runner dropped as much as it did, but I'm also happy for Happy Death Day because I had a lot of fun with that movie. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but I had fun with it, and it feels like a great kind of movie to go see with a group of friends leading up to Halloween. So I'm glad because that's especially coming off of Friend Request and Wish Upon this year, Happy Death Day is a movie that is actually of a certain quality and it's trying to be something special and there's actual thought and creativity put into it. So I'm glad it's seeing the benefits of that. And then going down to The Foreigner, The Foreigner, I, STX is actually doing pretty damn well too. I believe they distributed The Bye Bye Man and I know not all of us liked The Bye Bye Man, but it still made him a good deal of money. And now with The Foreigner, not only is it number three at the domestic box office, it's made a significant amount worldwide too. So they are well on their way to to making a pretty penny on that movie. It, of course, I want it to stay in the top five forever. The one that makes me really sad this weekend, though, is uh, Professor Marston and the Wonder Women, because I've told you guys, I really liked that movie. I think it had one of the worst per theater averages for a movie that was released in over a thousand theaters. I think it made something like $600 per theater, and that's bad. I think the the stat was it's it's like the 18th worst of all time for movies released in a thousand plus. So mm. I'm I'm sad for that. If you do get the opportunity to catch it, 
the box office does not represent the quality of the movie. It's still a great film, but that's a bad opening. Yeah, there's a couple of movies that just had, they, they had odd marketing campaigns, or and I'm not sure why the reason for both that and Marshall opening. And, you know, you have some big name talent in these movies, and they're both based on true stories. And just for whatever reason, they didn't have a huge marketing campaign or a lot of budget for that. But when you look at Blade Runner, I finally got to check it out last night. And it's a gorgeous movie. I really enjoyed it. Review is going to be up on Schmoes later today. I think that internationally, it just now made its total production budget back. So I think, I think it cost about $150 million, all things told. And now worldwide, it's made $158 million. So it made its budget back. But it just it, it's one of those things where you see a movie and it opens below expectations the first weekend. And so a lot of people say, well, don't worry. Everybody's going to hear about how good of a movie it is. Then everybody's going to rush out to see it second weekend. And very rarely is that the case whether it's with power rangers sorry perry or it's with blade runner it's just that sometimes movies just don't hit the way that you want them to but happy death day we talk a lot about an r rating and being necessary for horror movies or sometimes comic books happy death day was rated pg-13 i think that pg-13 rating is a tremendous boost to its box office because it could allow more people to go see a movie like this and it's a fun horror movie we got to check it out i had a i had a good time watching it for what it was and so i'm happy for for happy death day and the foreigner perry makes a great point is that it made just over 12 million dollars here it's already over 100 million dollars worldwide so stx and blumhouse had good weekends mark riley yeah they did i i'm actually looking forward to the foreigner i've heard really great things and a very like I know we get a Jackie Chan action movie, but he's also like, looks like he's acting his ass off and, and doing mm -hmm. it in a, in a way that's very different. So I'm, I'm excited for that. I look at Blade Runner 2049 as the big thing here. It dropped pretty substantially, which I knew it would. What, 54% 54, 54 in the second weekend. I really wish it, it, it would do better domestically uh, or otherwise um, because it's, the best movie out right now. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, I can say that. I, I loved everything about this movie. It, it was a perfect sequel. And it's also a movie that can stand on its own and it's asked some interesting questions that only Denis Villeneuve can pull off. So I hope more people... I know, I, you, you said it, Ellis. Not a lot of people are, are hearing the word of mouth and then going out to see this. They're hearing the word of mouth, I think, and going, yeah, I'll check it out on video. Right. And it's like, maybe that's what's going to happen ultimately. I just wish it was... More, uh, more people out there. Happy Death Day, though. I mean, I, I'm excited. I'm a horror-loving guy. Makes sense it did well. It was Friday the 13th weekend, so people wanted to... We're, we're right up against Halloween. People want to be scared. They want to do this. It's great marketing. Put it on fr uh, Friday the 13th. And I'm just happy for Blumhouse to keep mm -hmm. doing it. They, they have a good run going on right now, and it makes me excited for their Halloween. They have the rights to Halloween. We're going to get Halloween next year. Let's see if their run continues. Mr. Schneck. Yes. Uh, well, I'm very happy that uh, The Foreigner is doing well, unhappy about the Blade Runner box office. But look, I mean, you're watching a, a show right now called Movie Talk. I would implore you, if you haven't seen Blade Runner, to see it in IMAX. Yep. It is literally a cinematic experience. Whether or not you fall asleep, you think it's boring or something, you just can't handle it, just go see it for the visuals is what I would say, and then you'll get sucked into the actual movie because it isn't boring. It's a great film. Um, I can't say that strongly enough. I've reviewed it online. Uh, I've asked everyone to go see it. Uh, you're not doing me any favors. I'm trying to do you a favor. As a person who loves cinema, go see Blade Runner 2049. Um, that's all I could really say. See it in IMAX because it's a film unlike anything else that's out right now that's made to be seen in the movie theater. So, I mean, and also bring three of your stupid friends who are like on the fence about it, <laughs> drag them, knock them over the head, Take their money, make them pay for it. And they'll wake up in, inside the future. Like, what's happening? That's right, shut up and watch this movie. Anyway, glad Happy Death Day made some money. I'm going to check it out. A bunch of my friends said it was really fun. I was on the fence about it, like, oh, Groundhog Day. But then hearing more about it and some of the things that, you know, I didn't, I no spoilers. I don't know what really happens at the end, but I, now I want to see it. So Yeah, it's, a, it's not a great movie, but it, I, I, I think it played out in a way that, uh, that was enjoyable for what it was. So I did not regret the purchase of the ticket. All right, let's move on to buy or sell. This is part of the show where Ashley is going to give us a premise. We'll simply say whether we buy it or sell it, and this is all used with Monopoly money. <laughs> Focus Features officially announced via their website that Paul Thomas Anderson's next film, starring Daniel Day-Lewis, will be entitled Phantom Thread. The film, which will be Daniel Day-Lewis's last before he retires, is a drama set in the couture world of 1950s London with a story that illuminates the life behind the curtain of an uncompromising dressmaker 
commissioned by royalty and high society. It opens in select theaters later this year on December 25th. Riley, buy or sell the official title and plot details for Phantom Thread. Yep, buy it all. It's Paul Thomas Anderson, and it's Daniel Day-Lewis's last movie. I mean, I did pause with the the title. It's very different to me. It's like Phantom Thread, and it's in the fashion in the 50s, which if anybody can pull this off, it's Paul Thomas Anderson, and I I just want to see a trailer to see what we're mm-hmm. getting because I, it's it sounds pretty in, – it's just – out there to me phantom thread uh it's great actually it's a great title if the more i talk about it the more i think about it so yeah i want to know what the last movie daniel day lewis has signed on to if i mean obviously he re-teams with paul thomas anderson there will be blood so this is fascinating i'm in really you're that excited it's Paul Thomas Anderson, yes. Oh, God. It just, just, just reading that premise, it's like, oh, my God. Look, I love cinema. I love all kinds of story. This sounds like I'm falling asleep. Oh I got to be honest God. with you. I'm taking oh it now. God. Let's go watch a guy make clothes for royalty in London. Oh, boy, that's going to be a <laughs> woo. He, is, was, he is a cobbler, you know. Oh, my God. I mean, come on. Yeah, well, I could go watch the guy make shoes in real life, or I could go watch him make dresses for people for Mark Ellis, probably Mark three Ellis. hours. I, I, I understand. Just, this is because I didn't buy Coming to America 2, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's a it's payback. Like, this is it. I, this is payback. At my heart, I'm just, I, I go <laughs> to the movies to be entertained. It's just, it doesn't sound like anything's going to get me out of bed in the morning. This seems like it's just a little bit above reading to me. Um, I can't get excited about this. First of all, well, I don't think Double D Lewis is going to stay retired. I think that he announced his retirement. I genuinely think he's like tired of acting in the whole rigmarole, but I think that he's going to come back. I do not think this is the last movie he ever makes, and um, I, I'm going to see it. You know, going to have to see it, Perry. Wow, I'm cool surprised. Title. I'm surprised you had a reaction in that specific way. I, you know, I like Paul Thomas Anderson's work a lot sometimes, and then sometimes it doesn't really work for me at all. So it's not like I'm looking at this movie and saying, like, like yes, it's a sure thing. I'm going to get super into it. I know how I tend to fall with his movie, so I'm just curious to see what side of the divide I wind up on with this one. But we only have a single sentence. <laughs> Like it's it is a log line. It's not even a synopsis. We have no clue exactly what he's going to be doing in that fashion world. So I don't know if I'm ready to judge it with that. But with the title Phantom Thread, when they announced that, I'm like, haven't we been calling it that for months anyway? Like whatever, it's a cool title. I'm glad it's sticking. It's a single sentence, but it felt like three paragraphs. <laughs> Schnapp, your take on Phantom Thread, Mark Ellis. I'm so disappointed in you. Look, yeah. I'm not proud. Of, I'm not proud of the fact that let I me, feel like. Let this. me go back in time a little bit and and read it. I don't have the log line in front of me, but it was like, huh, Daniel Day Lewis. He's he's going to be he's playing a guy who's like l- looking for oil. It's called There Will Be Blood. It'd be like, all right, it's a weird title. Is that sound boring? No, nah, I mean, you know, milkshake and mustache enthusiast, right, well, Daniel Day-Lewis, I get it. I think, you know, once you see a trailer, you change your mind. Because in my eyes, when I read that sentence, and I know that the, the people behind it, Anderson and and uh, Slappy, I can't remember his name all of a sudden. Daniel, Daniel Day-Lewis. Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. Slappy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> those guys, I mean, look, not only is like, is it the film probably going to end with him cobbling shoes? They won't do that. <laughs> They're like, you know, it's going into reality. The Phantom Thread says it all for me. It's like, it's not the Phantom Thread like Star Wars. If Darth Vader was in it, maybe Mark Ellis would buy this. But what I'm saying is it's called Phantom Thread. It's hinting at like some kind of subterfuge in the, in the fashion industry. It's, it's like there's some invisible, like who made these clothes? There's going to be some kind of dynamism. There's going to be backstabbing. There's going to be all these things that we know. Like It's like making the high couture of fashion. Like, look at those people on the runway. Look how many people got screwed over. I feel like... There's so much drama that's in there. That's that's why Daniel Day Lewis is like going out on his last movie to do this. The script has got to be amazing. So I have total faith in Paul W. S. Anderson. Or so <laughs> wrong one. Paul wrong Thomas one. Anderson. Paul yeah. Thomas Anderson. <laughs> now, Sorry. If, if Paul Anderson, if the guy that made Mortal Kombat's making <laughs> yes. this movie, then I'm listening all of a sudden. See, I'm trying to get him to buy it by saying, look, the guy who made the Resident <laughs> Evil trilogy is now. Oh, Closing it out with the fashion industry and Star Wars. Oh, so the, fan, yeah. the Phantom Look, Thread. I'm happy to be on this island totally by myself. Uh, <laughs> let me throw it to the news desk. You guys hear this this log line, Ashley, and, and you know that it's Daniel Day-Lewis's last movie. Is this the movie that you're going to be lining up to see on Christmas Day? I honestly could not care less about this. <laughs> and that's what I was thinking this whole time because, like, 
you know, I love fashion, but like 1950s royalty fashion about a guy who doesn't want to compromise on his designs, don't care at all whatsoever. But when Schnepp said that there's drum behind the scenes, it made me think of Devil Wears Prada. And you what if they it. go that route? I would love that. That I buy. Yeah, no, I, yeah. wait, I take everything back. I think Anderson's going to make a really boring movie and I sell it. <laughs> Okay, wait, well, are you on my well, team now? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. I'm being really <laughs> sarcastic. Okay. Sarcasm is Wendy, it seems like Ashley was on Team Ellis there for a minute, and then she bailed. I flip-flopped. Oh, I was on the fence. Uh, it's, it's... I mean, the premise, it could, you could easily kind of like walk into that really boring, I'm going to fall asleep in yeah. this movie. But you look at the director and you look at the cast, or at least uh, Deanna Day Lewis, and you think, okay, well, I, I've always liked them. So, and then Schnepp in like 30 seconds sold me. I was like, I guess I'm seeing this on Christmas. And I think like with, I don't really like the title Phantom Thread. It just, it, it sounds a little, mm, doesn't really describe what this whole movie could it be. It's a sleepy title. Yeah, it's a, it is a sleepy phantom. So, but uh, I like what Schnepp said. I'm waiting to see a trailer. I actually think it's going to be pretty phenomenal. Okay. All right. That is <laughs> Sorry, Ellen. By himself. Phantom Sorry. Thread. Sorry, I'm apologizing. I, this is like, again, I understand it. I'm in the wrong here, but I'm going to be honest, damn it. All right, let's move on to something that we all care about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, pass up that Monopoly money because THR reports <laughs> that Conrad Vernon, the co-director of Sausage Party, has come on board to helm MGM's animated feature version of The Addams Family. The original creation started as a single panel illustration by cartoonist Charles Adams that appeared primarily in The New Yorker, which was then later turned into a television show in the 1960s and animated series in the early 1970s and a pair of hit movies in the early 1990s that starred Angelica Houston, Raul Julia, and Christina Ricci. CG animation work is currently underway at Cinesite Studios in Vancouver with a release date yet to be determined. Mark Byersell, Conrad Vernon directing an animated version of The Addams Family. Josh, Schnapp, get ready to walk off the table because they're creepy, they're kooky, and they're getting a buy from this guy. <laughs> I think this is a great idea in a very different way from Phantom Thread. I think that The Addams Family, it, it was a hit TV show, and the way that they were able to take that and inject that weird sense of humor into the early 90s movies, which I think those two movies are brilliant comedies. I think you go back and watch them, they are so funny, they are so well-crafted, the jokes in there still hit so hard. And I think that that really translates well into something that could be CG animated, I think along the lines of what Tim Burton was able to do with, uh, was it Frank and Weenie? Frank and Weenie. Yeah, uh, because he had that original movie he made in the 80s, then he, he did it in a CG animated way a few years ago. And I think that like a horror element that also incorporates comedy and has a lot of oddball humor, that can work so well with animation. And so a known property like The Addams Family, I think this is a no-brainer. How do you feel, Perry? I'm really into this, too. You know, when I first heard the idea, what went through my mind is that it could go one way or the other. It can go the way you're describing, and I think that's the way it should go. But, you know, there's also a good chance that that humor m might fall flat and not work, depending on who's directing it and who's writing it. But the writer on this is Pamela Petler, who did uh, Corpse Bride. Mm -hmm. So the fact that she has her hands on the script, and I liked Sausage Party. I, I liked it quite a bit. I had a lot of fun with that. So I'm behind Conrad Vernon being the director on this. And, you know, we, we also can't forget he did Shrek 2. He worked on Monsters vs. Aliens. And I think he's kind of built up a, a really promising track record. It's just... I hope they, I just hope they get it right. It's a very delicate balance. And those two movies, because I grew up watching those movies on repeat and they still play Adam's Family Values on TV all the time. And it's one of those things where it doesn't matter if I have somewhere to go, if that's on TV, no matter beginning, middle, end, I sit and I watch it straight through. I love them. I just hope that they capture that same magic in this rendition. John Schnapp, you're much taller than I, but do we see eye to eye on this subject? They do what they want to do, say what they want to say. Oh, boy. Hammer, yeah. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. They, yeah, anyway, I'm not going to keep saying Adam's that song. Adam's family. Adam's family. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, as long as I mean, like, I wish they would not lead it off with, like, sausage party director. They should be like Shrek 2 and Monsters vs. Aliens director because when I hear Sausage Party director, I instantly think there's going to be like some crazy orgy sequence at the end where the thing <laughs> and the hand are like pumping each other and you're like, what's oh, happening? Oh, oh, oh. Like a seven-minute horrible hey, Adams Family hey, freak out. Uh, yeah. uh, Gomez Morticia hinted at a lot of odd role playing that goes on in the bedroom <laughs> in the early 90s movie. Yeah. This is not that far of so, a leap, kid. I would like them to like play up the Shrek 2 Monsters vs. Aliens part of his directing, you know, because the guy's been involved in animation for decades. So yeah. I think 
I, I like the idea. I really do. And I, I thought that, like, I agree with you, like the two Adams Family films were creepy and kooky and fun in the way just like those one shot panels were way back in the day. So, I mean, I feel like uh, the Adams Family deserves a relaunch just like the Monsters. So I would love, I would love like now that the Adams Family has been announced, I want someone else to be like, oh yeah, well the Monsters is coming. Like they're gonna you know, go toe to toe. So <laughs> that's what I wanna see. So I'm really excited about hearing that it's being animated, that they're already way ahead. It's already like the designs, the storyboards are already done. They're already animating it. So when did they say it's coming out? They, they haven't said yet? Haven't said yet. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. I'm, I'm in. Mark mm. Riley, you're wearing a Lakers hat, so your judgment might be questionable. How do you feel yeah. on this subject? Oh, I'm buying this. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I agree with you a lot, Schnepp, in, in that um, lead with, like, Shrek 2, because he really did. Shrek 2, I think, is the best in that series, mm -hmm. so I'm glad that he's on to this. I'm not a big fan of Sausage Party. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it, I think it went a little too heavy on the... On the, uh, you know, the you know what jokes. I don't want to say it here. This is a family friendly show. It's a good so, man. It's a good um, man right there. But, however, though, there, there were moments for me that I did laugh. So I love the idea of taking some of the fun, the, some of the fun that worked with Sausage Party and then Shrek 2 and you have the Adams family. I think that you go humor, big humor, make this a comedy with the kookiness that you get from, uh, you know, Morticia and what's his name? Come on, Gomez. 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 Come on. So I know, Shmoda. Um, so I think uh, I think you, you have a lot of potential here, and I'm I'm excited for this. I would love to see some really different kind of animation from this to match the tone of the Adams Family. Do something very different that you haven't seen before. I think this could be a big hit, and I can't wait. You just reminded me, like they should go back to what to, the original yes, cartoons the original actually cartoons looked like. That would exactly. be incredible. I hope yeah. that they're doing that. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Have you guys seen the fan made poster? I saw it over the weekend. It's with Eva Green and Oscar Isaac. Mm -hmm. And no. it's just Google it if you haven't. The only thing that makes me a little disappointed we're getting an animated version and not a live action is because when you look at this poster, it it looks right. I would love to see an Adams Family movie with the two of them in the lead role. Absolutely. Yeah, if I was trying to sell somebody on seeing the Adams Family movies that came out in the 90s, you haven't checked them out yet, the way I'd pitch it is this. We may never get a Beetlejuice sequel. We, we may never want a Beetlejuice sequel. The closest thing to Beetlejuice is those Adams Family movies. As a wise man once said, too legit to quit. We, we, we might be getting a Beetlejuice sequel. They just got a new writer. All right, well, we want to remind you guys that this is not the only show on Collider Video. We have all new episodes of TV Talk and Heroes. There's rumors that Josh McCoog is back in America. I don't know if he's hosting today or not, but uh, I'm glad that passport worked out for you. We also have behind the scenes and bloopers. A great episode this past weekend that I checked out for my hotel room in Cincinnati. Perry, it was New York City Comic Con. Oh, it was. We had so much fun. I get the Comic Con blues every time we go on one of those trips and it's over, but watching that makes me makes me all happy again you guys did like i know you did a lot of work anyway and then to see all of the work that you mm. did for the behind the scenes and bloopers it's a pretty incredible performance no, put together. yeah it's it's something else and uh shout out to frank our editor who cut yeah. together like an insane amount of footage of all the nonsense that went on behind mm. the scenes there it was really great and they got me in my airport garb which is the hoodie is up because i don't <laughs> like to be recognized i'm kidding <laughs> you can say hi to me just not in the bathroom thank you all right we're gonna move on to mailbag at the end of this show we're gonna save some time for maybe one or two live twitter questions <laughs> Go ahead and start tweeting us at Collider Video, and you can email us anytime, collidervideo at gmail.com, and we might answer your question like what we're about to do right now. All right, Drew the Dude writes, Dear Collider, y'all are dope, Nuff said. Thank you. My question is, what do you think about New Mutants rating? Originally, I remember them talking about how New Mutants is supposed to be rated R like Logan, but now it has a PG-13 rating. I don't think they mentioned anything about the PG-13 rating until after the movie was already done with shooting. Could it be that they made the movie that they wanted to make and realized that it didn't have to be rated R? Do you guys think it would be better as an R-rated film? That's a great question, Drew the Dude, and we don't necessarily have an answer for you as far as the official rating of New Mutants because we searched high and low. I have a crack team that is sitting to my left and to my right that did a lot of Googling this weekend. So we have no official rating for the movie, and a lot of times when you see a trailer for a movie, they say this film has not yet been rated, and sometimes that lasts all the way up until a couple weeks before it comes out. So we don't know what the official rating of New Mutants. Either way, I'm going to be excited at, based on that trailer that I saw, and I think that even with that and even with Logan, and this may be something controversial to say, I think we get a little too high on what the rating is. I think that Logan, with that story, would have been 
great PG-13. It was nice to see Wolverine get the full claws out. Same with Deadpool. It's nice to see no jokes being held back so we could have that R rating. But as far as New Mutants goes, I'm not going to be concerned if it's rated PG-13 at all. This is a movie about a lot of kids that are becoming mutants and discovery. They're already mutants, but they're discovering what their powers are. So I think that that could attract a younger audience as well as all of us comic book movie fans. So I don't think a PG-13 rating is going to hurt it, Riley. No, I don't think it'll hurt it at all. Look at Happy Death Day. Just came out. You know, the marketing. Look at that first trailer. That's a horror movie. And I love it. And we don't need it to be an R-rated horror movie. This looks more like a ghost story. Mm. This has a haunted house feel to it, which is what Josh Boone said he was going to. He, there's a new interview out with him now that he says it's going to kick off a trilogy. We could probably talk about that tomorrow. But I like where his head's at. And that what they've showed with that trailer shows that we don't. it doesn't need to be R-rated. Um, you know, I don't... I, it's starting to become that thing was like, well, Deadpool and Logan did R-rated and killed it, so every movie needs to be R-rated. No, no, no. You got to look at what the source material is, what what they're trying to do, and and with New Mutants, PG-13 would work fine. I I don't even I think PG could work too. I mean, really, I don't know. It, it, yeah. It's probably going to be PG-13. <laughs> it's probably going to be PG-13. But you know, it's all in the way you shoot it. It's all in the way that you you, you handle whatever this is. I mean. You know more than uh, than me, Schnapp, about New Mutants. I hear there's a giant bear or something that he's right. going off of. Well, it's a not a real bear; it's a demon bear. Demon but, bear. Uh, so yeah, you, I mean, so, so I that's PG thirteen to me. Yeah, it's. Gonna, I think you know it probably will ride the line between PG thirteen and R. But you know, if they want to, it's it's literally a few cuts here and there usually that differentiate what becomes R and what becomes PG thirteen. I mean, Deadpool outside of just the violence, would have been rated R just because of all the F-bombs. Sure. So sure. There's, the rating system is so weird anyway. Like, sometimes you can see a PG-13 movie that you're like, my God, how did they get away with all this stuff? This is, like, damaging for kids to see. Or verse, you know, so sometimes R-rated movies, like, why was that rated R? I mean, so I think the rating system is screwed up anyway, so I'm not really concerned about the rating system. I'm just more interested in seeing the movie, and I'm glad it's a horror film. It's psychological. It's going to introduce these characters to the world so you know i know a lot of people are like not so enthused with the trailer because a lot of people weren't even sure what it was i think when it first came out what is this new mutants thing i think as people probably with the second trailer as we get more into what the story's about and you a little more character development I think you'll see a bigger reaction. But to me, whether it's rated R or PG-13, I don't care. Yeah, totally. I don't need to know exactly what genre or genre a movie is in as long as I'm intrigued. So that new Mutants trailer got me intrigued as far as the rating goes, Perry. What say you? Well, the best genre is Hanra. Get with it. <laughs> um, yeah. The, it. Yeah. So we did Google all weekend, and there was never any official statement that said, oh, we're gunning for an R rating with this. So I don't even think the movie has an official rating yet anyway. Mm -hmm. So... It makes sense to me that this one would be PG-13, but I do really think that both Logan and Deadpool required that R rating, and they justified it. And back when Logan came out, Simon Kim Kimberg was walking around giving quotes regarding the R rating of Logan, and with future installments of the X-Men film franchise, he said, we don't go into it saying, oh, this is going to be our R-rated one. This one's going to be a PG-13 PG one. They make the movie and they develop the story as they see fit, as they best see fit, and then they decide. So it's not a cart before the horse thing. You can't just go ahead and give something a rating before you actually develop the story. But with what I saw from the new Mutants trailer, I don't see why it couldn't be PG-13. I almost got like a like a Stranger Things type vibe. And, you know, that obviously does not operate on the same rating scale as a feature film. But when you look at something like Stranger Things, on the one hand, I think it can be suitable for, for younger moviegoers. But at the same time, there's a lot of very frightening supernatural things happening in that show where you don't necessarily need to cross that line into to blood and gore and sex scenes and profanity. So it seems like they could work the PG-13 option well here. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think that Logan and Deadpool were, were better movies because they got the freedom of an R rating, but I think that's the biggest thing is that it opened the floodgates for a creator to say, we're just going to make the movie that we want to make, rating be damned. I, th I, I like that, that artists have the freedom to make movies like that. So if New Mutants happens to be rated R, great. PG-13, fine. I just think we don't want to see a New Mutants trailer then at the end 
have the fun guy say rated G. We're not <laughs> going to see that. All right, let's do one quick Twitter question. We'll call it a day. Wendy, what are they saying today? This one comes from Rocky Drago 66, who writes, after seeing these two trailers for Black Panther, any, any chance this film beats Deadpool's opening weekend for a February film? I think it definitely has a shot, and we had a fun debate on the show last week as to what's going to open to a higher domestic opening weekend. Is it going to be Thor Ragnarok, or is it going to be Black Panther? And I said Black Panther before I saw this trailer, and I'm saying Black Panther after I saw this trailer. No disrespect to Thor Ragnarok, because I cannot wait to see that movie. I just think that Black Panther is going to be more of a culturally significant film than what Thor Ragnarok is going to be, and Black Panther is not going to have a lot of similar competition landing in the middle of February as where Thor Ragnarok does have Justice League knocking on his door two weeks later. So I got Black Panther, Riley. Yeah, I think Black Panther, for all the reasons you said. I mean, look at, look at that trailer. When the first teaser came out, everybody was like, what? And then you, you mentioned the, the cultural significance behind it, the, 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 the curiosity behind it as well, that this is one of the first Marvel movies to feature Black Panther. Uh, I mean, they, they've been talking about this for years, so I think you're going to get a lot of people that don't normally go out to the movie theaters um, opening night, mm. and they're going to want to see the hell out of this thing. I mean, I already know. I, if I could buy my ticket now, I would. I'm going opening night to be with the fans on this one because it looks fun. The music's kicking ass. The, everything about this thing looks exciting, and um, you have the Marvel brand behind it as well. And then after Black Panther leads right into Infinity War, so there's a lot going for it that this could definitely beat Deadpool. Perry Nemiroff. I believe I had said Thor when we spoke about this last, not by much, but you know, I was thinking Thor has a lot of other very familiar faces in it. Also the Thor films, they do tend to rise every opening weekend. So I thought that trend was gonna continue here and it definitely might, it definitely will actually, I think. But Thor versus Black Panther, I think I'm switching teams a little Ooh. here. There's, there's something about this trailer that just feels so, so different and in the best way possible. And Black Panther has an excellent release date slot where it is sitting in the perfect position to just make all the money because nothing really is coming before it. Nothing's going to steal its thunder after it. See what I did there? It's a Thor joke. Ah. Um, ah. I, I, I just got it. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I had to point out my joke is because I was reading your expression. I'm like, you didn't get it. Um, I, it took a minute. It took a minute. <laughs> But I, I do think that uh, Black Panther, <laughs> for what I just said and for the reasons you guys said, might might have the edge now. John Schnepp, the final word, Black Panther versus Thor Ragnarok. After today, you are not allowed to change your answer Not forever. switch. I'm going to say Black Panther because I, I feel like Thor is the third one. Black Panther is the newest kid on the block. I think it's the most exciting trailer that we've seen of all of the trailers we've seen so far, including the, tr the teaser. It just gets you amped and into it, and it's a brand new world to explore. I think... There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with going back to Thor. I'm super happy that we're seeing Surtur and we're seeing Hela and all these characters brought to life in this Thor film. Loki's returning, all the, the Hulk is in it. Yeah, of course I love everything about Thor Ragnarok, but to me Black Panther is the one that a lot of people, including myself, have been waiting for and it was supposed to come out this year. Remember, it got pushed mm -hmm. back with the Spider-Man thing. So look, the anticipation for it and then seeing what Coogler's done with it it looks incredibly exciting and new and different. So that's why I'm so amped to see it. I think everyone else is going to feel the same way as we get closer to February, and then we're all going to pile on. We should do a Collider special screening, right? I'm mm. in. Come on, let's do Ooh, it. Get all I the like nerds that. with us. Be like, Black Panther, freaking out, crying and stuff. Oh, it's going to be great come February, and I am very excited for tomorrow night. Get to see Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a good week for old Mark Ellis. All right, I want to say thank you to all you guys for watching the show, for commenting. We always appreciate your viewership and your loyalty to this here show. Make sure you guys subscribe right here at Collider Video's YouTube channel. Thank you to the hardworking cast and crew, everybody behind the scenes, as well as up here on the desk with me, John Schnepp. Where can the kids find you? Well, you can find me later today on a brand new Heroes. We're going to get even sweatier about the Black Panther trailer and a bunch of other news. And you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, just at John Schnepp. And at Stan Lee's Comic Con, we're doing a Heroes panel. We're doing a bunch of stuff. I'm going to have all the dates and times and stuff in the coming week. So definitely come to Stan Lee's Comic Con here in L.A. We're going to have a big flavor pack for you. Perry Nemiroff. I am on Twitter and Instagram, at P. Nemiroff. If you do not see me the rest of the week, the bee has got me. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're rooting for you, but I might have my money on the bees. Mark Riley. <laughs> I hope the bees leave you alone. The bees. Uh, find me at Riley around on Twitter and Instagram. I pop up all the time here, like on that video I did with Ken Knapsack about porgs. Yeah, that's right. Porgs. Check it out or not. I mean, it's porgs. 
She <laughs> is <laughs> the thimble to my banker, <laughs> Ashley Mova. Where can everybody find you? You guys can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, Ashley Mova. Happy Monday, guys. Happy Monday, indeed. And Wendy Lee Zaney. You can find me on YouTube at the Movie Couple channel, at Wendy Lee Zaney on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. I am merely Mark Ellis. Thank you to all the fans that came to see me in Cincinnati, the Funny Bone, this past weekend. This weekend, I will be in Chicago. I'm going to be doing a bunch of different Zanies. Got the Downtown Club on Thursday, the St. Charles location on Friday, and then the Rosemont location Saturday. See you guys all over Chicago. Looking forward to some deep dish pizza. You can get tickets at markellislive.com, and we'll see you all right back here tomorrow for another episode of Collider Movie Talk. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Movie Talk. You want to watch more? Then click up here or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. And if you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.